and I knew it was like again definitely not my day because usually I can run quite well doesn't matter even if I get cramps I can run guess where I've arrived guess where I am is this too much of a hint is it too much yes I mean Helsinki for me, it's the first time in Finland. I'm quite excited. I'm quite excited because I've never tried Finnish food or like, yeah, I talk always about food, but yeah. Um, I'm here for the 70.3 uh, World Championship. I'm on, I mean, 70.3 as half I am, if you don't know about triathlon. Um, yeah. I'm actually quite excited to check these things out, uh, perhaps more than the actual race itself. What's great about triathlon is that uh, you get to go to many different places, locations, resorts, whatever destinations where you wouldn't go if there's no race. I, I would come here perhaps without race, but yeah, races give me reasons to go to these destinations and yeah. I'm quite excited. Absolute kills as you can see. <laughs> so, it took us about one and a half hours to pick up the luggage. Um, the bike was one and a half hours. Like, even a normal luggage took us like an hour. First finished food, the finished bread. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's kind of like pierogi but in a bread form. I think it's gonna take like at least two hours till we get the car, if we are lucky. Welcome to Helsinki. Finally, we are on our way to the hotel. How many hours did we take? Three, three and a half hours, four hours? Crazy, crazy. My first impression is it's kind of like cities in the Netherlands. M modern architecture, it's looking quite cool. It's 8 p.m. but uh, still quite um, bright outside. I don't know why I am on a starting a race so early though, because you know, we can start way later. But yeah, anyway. We are here, we are here. We just got to AX Hotel in Helsinki. It's a compact but uh, interesting design. The uh, facade has got this uh, metal sort of slates with uh, heaps of uh, holes. Not sure if I can focus, yeah, like that. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Nice bed. So this is a restaurant Capelli we asked at AX Hotel. Where's a good place for trying some Finnish food? And the receptionist uh, recommended us about this restaurant. That's really good. Um, the, the bread with uh, shrimps on top. We thought like that was kind of like what we had in Copenhagen, but uh, the bread had honey on top, I think. We think that was honey on top, on top of uh, rye bread, and that was, that was surprisingly good. Um, the horse radish was quite strong and made a very interesting balance. And um, my main course was reindeer. Amazing, amazing. So smooth, so smooth. Yeah, just no, you know, like when you when you eat that kind of meat usually it's got quite wired flavor but uh, yeah that was that was really smooth yeah I'm quite pleased uh, we were very pleased about the food we had tonight now we're gonna head back to the hotel oh we, we might walk around a bit then uh, yeah, just help uh, digesting our food and uh, yeah, hit the hay.
It's Thursday already. I did a, a test swim this morning, then I went on a bike course. Uh, it's quite undulating, like undulating whole, like whole course is pretty much going up or down. There's, I, I didn't see any like flat parts. Um, which is like a, a race I did like uh, a week, yeah, a week ago, no, a week and a half ago. So I think I've uh, I've done a quite good practice there. I went to the uh, race briefing in Japanese, so yeah, that was uh, quite compact, and uh, you know, it's easier to hear what people are saying or asking so that's quite good now i'm at uh, athlete check-in so yeah gonna grab a bag got a bag it's not bad it's not bad in south africa i couldn't even get a bag that he sent me a bag later and in nice they ran out of um the the bags and they actually had to bring some from the uh, merchandise tent to to give something different to us. Anyway, I've got a I've got a, an official one, so it's all good. It's all good. Now I'm standing in front of the uh, the Pro T2 bike racks. Um, yeah, some some names there. All here. All here. They'll be mounting their bikes here after after the bike. Yeah, at the time of this recording, of course, I don't know how, how it turns out, but uh, yeah, um, it'd be interesting to see who's gonna come to the, to the finish line first. I just came back from my test ride and also the activation run and had a shower. As you can see, I've got no top, but anyway, that's okay. Um, the the bike went okay oh actually a bit, bit of rewind uh this morning it's uh it's friday today <laughs> it's friday yeah this morning we we kind of walked around in um in helsinki and look at some church and yeah some interesting architecture yeah that was quite good fun um yeah got to a new location sort of like about 30 minutes um, out of uh, Helsinki, kind of a little bit closer to uh, Lahti. Uh, it's not so close, so I still need to drive about an hour to the race location. So it's a bit, bit far away, but uh, yeah, uh, this accommodation is the, the, the on, only, the, this accommodation was the closest accommodation I could find. Um, so yeah. Um, actually, in this building, um, there are quite a few triathletes uh, staying. It's a sort of um, apartment kind of unit um, in this building, and yeah, I so saw some other triathletes. So I guess uh, yeah, it's not a bad option. My legs are a bit heavy still, but uh, yeah, my bike, my bike is going okay. So shifted okay. Yeah, and uh, my aisle bars are stable. I printed a new model and yeah, it's quite solid. Now I'm getting ready for the check-in tomorrow, the bike check-in and also the T2 bike check-in. I put everything together so I can see what I've got and I go through. So this is the, uh, the street gear bag. I put a uh, wetsuit, a uh, neoprene cap, just in case when it's really cold. I've got this uh, dark blue cap, got new goggles, and this is when I can't really do proper swim warm up. I just do that using a stretch band on land. What have I got here? That's for the uh, bike bag. I didn't put my shoes here, but uh, yeah, obviously the shoes going to be on the bike and uh, yeah, the helmet and the cycle computer. I use a really simple Garmin one because I tend not, I tend not to uh, look 
at the uh, the numbers um, just usually go with a feeling especially when when the course is really undulating it's really about how you get into the rhythm and knowing your efforts so yeah I think the second computer is going to be under my arm so anyway you won't I won't be able to see much and that's okay and I've got this coming back yes I'm putting a camera back in my in my uh, race suit right next to me so I can reduce the uh, the drag um, when I test it before I am on Hamburg I felt uh, a huge difference even when I had my upper body up in the wind it made a really good shape to get the air around so yeah not only when I'm in the air position but when I put my uh, upper body up so yeah I, I'm planning to put about one and a half liters of water or even more I'm not sure maybe one and a half yeah so the weight penalty is going to be okay because when I'm riding up hills my top over um, my upper body is uh, in the wind but still I can go faster um, here I've got a, a aero stuff um, these are the calf tubes uh, I think I'm gonna use these uh, but just in case when it gets really cold or wet I'm thinking about putting these uh, overshoes on and also the, uh, the gloves and that's a rain jacket it's a quite tight one so yeah uh, the wind jacket uh, the rain jacket is not going to flop around and uh, become um, resistance uh, what have I got here these are my sugar mix uh, plus a bit of salt um, yeah that's what I'm gonna um, drink or more like gel I'm gonna make gel and uh, yeah put that in my bike drink system in the uh, camera bag I'm going to put pure water so I don't I'm not gonna mix the gel, gel and uh, the water I just squeeze gel into my mouth um, through the drink system on my bike then after that I, I rinse my mouth with the uh, pure water so I'm not gonna uh, have that really bad sensation with a super high concentration gel and that's my um, air suit uh, from my team to snooker in Berlin it's got uh, yeah it's a uh, uh, bio racer suit and uh, the second generation um, I quite like the material on the shoulders they the earlier version tend to kind of rip and I ripped them already uh, but uh, this material this fabric uh, tends to um, hold way better way better okay what have I got here I've got uh, running shoes meter speed 2 and uh, yeah talc powder um, I'm going to put powder on my shoes at the 70.3 World Championship in Lahti. I don't have to put the, the, the bib uh, when I'm on a bike. So yeah, I decided to uh, take this setup. Usually I just use a, a thin rubber bands in loops to put that on uh, my back during the bike. But since I don't have to put the bib on during the bike, I decided to use this bib holder uh, which works as a um, flask holder as well I'm going to put my own gel in this flask which I have to do tomorrow and uh, yeah put that in I've been practicing um, sort of long runs with uh, this setup so yeah I think uh, I'm quite used to it and uh, it'll be really good um, in Nice back in 2019 um, 
because M45, the age group M45 is a last wave and there's no water or um, gel available at the first, yeah, at, at eight stations for the first 5K or something like that. And I, I just don't like that, just in case, you know, because my wave is again M45, but obviously that's the last one again. So I'm going to prepare my own gel. So at least I'm not going to be empty. Um, water, hopefully, um, I'm going to have some on the course. But yeah, that's how I'm going to pack. Yeah. It's Finland, of course. A flat comes with a, a sauna. Unbelievable. I actually heard, heard about this, like all the uh, flats in Finland have got a sauna inside and it is, it is here. So, Today is Saturday. This morning, after I woke up, I tried to watch the, uh, the female pros. Uh, of course, that didn't really happen. And uh, yeah, on YouTube, I watched uh, what was happening uh, during the, uh, the bike and also the run. Interesting. Yeah, the bike was quite fast. You know, it's undulating, but still, they went quite fast. So, yeah. It's going to be quite exciting tomorrow. Um, I just uh, did a, a backdrop uh, bike check-in and yeah, um, as you can see, there are so many people uh, waiting in queue. Luckily, I took the first slot so and I came quite late so I didn't have to wait uh, much at all. And yeah, just uh, uh, sorted out the bag and also the the bike of course um, ask a few questions about how uh, the logistic is like here and yeah it's all good to go I'm gonna go to T2 yeah so I can put my running back and stuff there then after that I'm gonna go home and sleep go to bed really early <laughs> Well, what's the time? It's uh, 6.40. Um, I just cooked my pasta for tomorrow. Bit of carb loading, as usual. Then, gonna hit the hay. I'm at the, uh, the T1 now. I just came out after setting things up. Uh, I forgot two things, or actually three things rather. Uh, I didn't realize that we, we couldn't access to the T1 bag this morning. Uh, I left my shoes in the bag. Also, um, I've got, yeah, I've got a camera back, but I forgot to put that in the bag. Because I wanted to fill fill it with uh, water this morning and uh, uh, put that in a bag, so yeah, I had to put a camera bag on my bike case. Yeah, what a disaster! I mean, because <laughs> yeah, that's how I take my liquid uh, because I separate the gel and uh, the water. Yeah, and on top of that, I thought to put a, a cycle computer in a bag, so I need to go back to the car and go back and put that on my bike. Hopefully, I didn't forget that uh, in an apartment. Well, if I did, I don't really have to look at the uh, 
um, the power anyway. The only thing I like to see is uh, the speed and also the time. Distance is marked on a course, so it's kind of okay, but yeah. Oh, shit happens. Stupid, stupid. Uh, yeah, uh, depending on a race, it's all different. So yeah, I should have really read the uh, athlete guy through, but yeah, that's my fault. Yeah, bit of a stress, bit of a stress in the morning. Oh well, I still got time, so yeah, I get to chill, I guess. I'm back in a car, and yeah, I forgot my cycle computer at home. Yeah, oh, so stupid, so stupid. I mean, first, I I couldn't put my camera back in a T1 bag and also I couldn't take my shoes out from the bag. That means I can't mount my shoes on a bike. I mean, the transition area is not long like in Hamburg. I am in Hamburg, which is like 800 meter long. So that does make a huge difference. But here is almost nothing compared to that. And there's a carpet, so I think it should be okay. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I forgot my cycle computer at home. That means I just have to ride it with the feeling. I I've done that quite quite often, so that shouldn't be a problem. And that's how that kind of training becomes handy. Because otherwise you just panic like straight away. Oh, oh um, without looking at the power, um, I'm gonna overpace myself, or just like yeah, I just I just have to write to the power, then you're done. But yeah, um, I I am okay. Um, when I did a, a race, uh, what that. Yeah, two weeks ago in Oschersleben, I had a cycle computer, but I hardly saw my cycle computer anyway, because I I have my cycle computer under my left arm, and when I'm riding, it's just underneath. So when I'm tucked in, I don't see it. And that's good, because it's tucked away from the wind, less air resistance. And um, yeah, when when you when you see the the race developing with all other uh, athletes riding at kind of similar pace, you you know where you are. And yeah, I'm kind of affirming myself before the race. But yeah, that's uh, how how the race would uh, go. And um, yeah, just just control when I'm going up the hill and push a little bit harder uh, at the top of the hill so I can go faster going downhill. Uh, I've done a course recon so I kind of know where the force flat is. And yeah, just right with the feeling. I, I think I'm used to that so it shouldn't be a problem. And... I've got a watch waiting for me at T2 and roughly, yeah, uh, I know the run pace, but again, um, yeah, depending too much on a, on a GPS is actually really bad because quite often, I don't know why, it happens only on a race day. The GPS doesn't read so well at the beginning, so the pace is kind of like screwed up. So yeah, again, I really have to trust myself and control at the beginning of the run. So yeah, um, that's how, how I should do. Yeah, um, the pros will be starting at 7.30. 
and they should be coming out of the water around 7.20. So I'll be, I'll be going to the, the swim exit and have a look. But otherwise I just chill in a car till my turn comes. I'll be starting, uh, my, my wave is starting at 9.46, which is like, how many hours have I? Two hours, 40 minutes away. Two hours and 40 minutes away, so yeah. I think I want to chain a car, sleep, have a nap. Yeah, and eat more Haribo's. <laughs> I'm late. I, I don't know what's happening with me here in Lahti. Everything is off. I missed the time to do the warm up. Um, warm up swim. I did a bit of warm up run, but really, really short. Um, I used the uh, elastic band to do the swim warm up. I should be now. But yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm too relaxed today. Maybe not focused, not hyped up enough. I don't know. But uh, yeah, uh, in the pros, Germans are doing so well. I hope Rico Borga is gonna win. Or at least top three, top three. That would be so good. Yeah. He's my dark horse today. <laughs> okay, so all other they're all they're all waiting, so I gotta get in. Okay, see you at the see you at the finish line.
I just um, changed my clothes. Um, now wearing a Finnish T-shirt and also uh, a Finnish towel and a Finnish cap. Yes, I somehow managed to get to the finish line. It was not my day. It was definitely not my day. Oh, where should I start? I mean, yeah, as you've seen already, um, I missed the warm-up swim. I, oh, and yeah, just as I dived into the water, of course, my goggles came off. Yeah, yesterday I was uh, talking to my teammate and like, uh, yeah, probably it's not gonna make much difference jumping in from the head or from the legs because, yeah, there isn't too much. I mean, if you take the, if you have to take the goggles off and put them back again, yeah, it's the same as all others. I mean, I didn't lose any time, so it's okay, but um, I think I started too late, way too late. Um, I got overtaken by only maybe like two people, which is unheard of. I, I'm, I'm, not that, I'm not that fast because I, I managed to do like one or two swimming sessions a week. Um, yeah, I think I did like 33 minutes this time, but yeah, I had to go around all other people to, to um, yeah, just pass them. Yeah, I was so surprised. Like, it's, it's the World Championship, but the amount of people who just, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> like, I could easily overtake this others that means they, they I don't know they swim like 38 or something that much difference um, yeah uh, nice and relaxed swim um, yeah um, I, I did a, a warm-up with a rubber rubber band stretch band uh, stretch cause oh my my brains fried I can't really think Anyway, that was enough, that was enough. Then came up from the water. Surprise, surprise. Of course, it was raining. And yeah, um, I, I didn't have any problem with the camera back. Just put that um, in front of my um, suit. Uh, that was okay. But yeah, oh. Sorry, raining heavier and heavier. And yeah, that was that's quite hard uh, for our age group you know I think we, we had really bad luck um, yeah yes. did, it, did it stop to the last 10 kilometers the rain didn't stop yeah um, I wasn't feeling cold at all but uh, there are some people who had to stop on the side and uh, put the, um, the the foil on them because they're feeling just way too cold and couldn't continue um, 
cycling. So yeah, I felt sorry for them. Um, yeah, and uh, it was really difficult to see the road surface, especially these holes, because it was wet and also there are like water patches everywhere, everywhere. And yeah, I hit these potholes quite a few times, but uh, yeah, and yeah, uh, because of that, I usually I can usually go quite fast going down hills, but uh, yeah, I couldn't do that. But that that wasn't my major problem. The major problem was I just didn't have my legs. Yeah, uh, excuse, excuse. One month ago, I had a. Uh, an accident, uh, I hit my hips really badly and one week later I did a tenkai, there's a video on that but yeah. Um, I felt okay up to that point but after that I, I just felt so off. Um, I, was, I was okay up to the tenkai I did, tenkai run, but after that I was so off. I was so off. So yeah, um, I couldn't bike properly. I couldn't do any solid sessions. So yeah, that was that was the reason why. Um, yeah, I, I just didn't have legs, and I I figured that out after like 30 k, because you know 30 k I did that. Uh, at a race uh, a week, two weeks ago. So that was okay, but uh, yeah, then realized, yeah, I need to save my legs. And yeah, I was really careful, but yeah, I was already feeling, oh, you know, a little bit, little bit twitching. I managed to go up the last hill before the transition safely. So that was okay. Did a, um, did an, slow transition T2 I, I couldn't find my rack of course of course I couldn't oh. <laughs> um, and he got hit by a, a, a baby <laughs> usually I'm okay but uh, in this state with my legs I probably just cry because of that but yeah um, yeah I couldn't find my bike rack because, you know, of course I couldn't really see it uh, yesterday. So yeah, I was like, oh, where is it, where is it? But, I mean, I had such a slow bike, so it didn't really matter, matter at that time already. I didn't have a cycle computer, but I knew that was a really slow bike, so I wasn't too worried. But, after T2, I came out to the run course, and there's a, a bridge, over bridge, in order to let all the, um, all the spectators go through underneath. Uh, we, had to, we have to climb. That, that was so evil. That was so evil. Going up, I just got really, really badly cramped up, and uh, is that a B? Anyway, um, I got cramped up, and even worse, going down because that's such steep down, down slope. And after that, I really had to stop and just. I had to sit down to stretch my quads and that happened one more time I think. After that I kind of started running okay. Uh, I did a running track part then I had to sit down again. No, hang on, maybe not again. Yeah, that was the only time I actually had to squat down. No, that was the first time. Anyway, so after that, I kind of pick up the pace. After a long, kind of long uphill, I could manage to go like four minutes per kilometer or something like that. Or f no, 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 4.15, 4.20, not four. 4.15, 4.20, yeah. 
because uh, I was running with another guy. Uh, I think he's an Aussie. Yeah, good lad. Um, yeah, he he was a really good pacer. Then uh, we swapped a turn, and of course, they got cramp again. Just by the Red Bull um, spot. Can't remember how exact which point but yeah then I had to squat down again and stretch my quads yeah and I knew it was like again definitely not my day because usually I can run quite well doesn't matter even if I get cramps I can run yeah then the first lap and I came back to the um, the T2 finish area uh, to climb up the bridge again but that this time I was really really careful so I was okay I managed I managed although I was running quite quite a lot slower anyway already then yeah the last lap I came back just before the uh, the going to the uh, finish line I didn't know that actually I knew that but I totally forgot about that bridge we had to go up again and oh I, I thought I managed I, I thought I managed to climb up that bridge and came down then about 300 meters before the goal line I had to stop I was like in such agony, just my legs shut down, absolutely shut down. So yeah, painful, painful. Um, yeah, so that was my day, but this time not like in Hamburg. At least I've got a finisher T-shirt, uh, finisher towel, and a finisher cap. Business done. Finished it. I finished it in Finland. Finish. That wasn't funny at all. You can tell my brain is not working. Okay, that was enough. Now uh, one great news, though. One great news. Um, I look after Team Berlin triathlon team, and guess what? One guy from our team won the pro yes he became the world champion Rico Bogan my congratulations to Rico I should wrote him like yeah the the bike course is kind of like in Zaxxon so you should be you should have a chance you really had a chance I I haven't watched the, uh, the footage yet of course because you know I just finished the race but uh, I'm really looking forward to see the footage, the uh, live stream thing, and also, yeah, I should congratulate him. Amazing. So, yeah, that was my day. I'm going to do a, a team relay thing in two weeks. Then, in October, oh, then I'm, I'm gonna have a bit of rest. Then, in, at the end of October, I'm going to do 70.3 canteen. So, that's my plan. Uh, I think I better go and uh, pick up my bike. So, see you in the next video. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I nearly forgot to show this. It's uh, a fat, really, really fat one. Quite good. Yeah, the, uh, the championship race has got uh, a massive medal. So. Yeah, have a good look. 7.3 world champion. His second professional win. He swam 22.52. He biked to 156.17. A 111.02 half marathon. A 3.32.22. And this makes him the bin fast. Ironman 70.3 World Champion Germany's Rico Bogen. And Rico, 
The only problem with winning races is you have to make speeches. The microphone is all yours. Uh, thank you for coming. I'll, I came here to the, my first 70.3 World Champs with the aim to go in the top 10. And now I'm standing here with 22 years and can call me a world champion. This is just unbelievable. I want to thank my sponsors, my supporters, who makes this all possible. I want to thank my family, who believed in me always, in the good and in the bad days. I want to thank all the volunteers who made such events even possible. Without them, it's not possible. And I want to thank Ironman for hosting such a great big event. And I want to thank uh, Finland for hosting uh, such great venue, such a uh, race venue I didn't race. It was just amazing. Congrats all the athletes who finished this race. I hope you all enjoyed it. And hopefully we see us next year at the World Champs in New Zealand. Thank you. A massive congratulations to Rico and our top 10 men. One more time, defending champion Taylor in USA and brand new champion. The drama continues. After we got home, so yeah, we, we attended a work ceremony and got home and I realized that my front wheel had a puncture, like slow puncture. Look at this. No wonder I was going so slowly on a bike, but I didn't notice because it was raining and water everywhere i just couldn't see because there's so much water and i couldn't see the puncture so well and yeah the visor had so much water drops yeah i think that was the reason why i, I used my legs so much on the bike i feel kind of bitter now i don't know mixed feeling sort of but yeah there's no ifs you know, the result is result. So yeah, I just have to be extra careful next time. We learn something every time as a surprise. So this time, definitely see you in the next video. <laughs>